home. I'm coming, friend. But be prepared for a lot of I told you so's. Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. Upon first hearing that title, you might be asking yourself, what is a chicken hair? Well, um, uh, how can I put this? Um, you see, when a chicken and a hare love each other very, very much. <coughs> okay, for real though, this was a movie that took quite a long time to show the epic adventure of this curious hybrid. Back in 2011, Sony Pictures Animation was set to produce an adaptation of the graphic novels by Chris Grime. The process was a little slow, but Grime was showing some enthusiasm that the movie was heading towards the right direction. In that case, what happened to the picture that made it go south at Sony? Well, there's no specific confirmation as to why, but my guess is that the 2014 Sony hack that caused the entire studio to flip upside down might have played a key role in its downfall and caused the whole project to be shelved. It wasn't until 2019 that the film got a second chance when the Belgian animation studio behind the Bigfoot movies, The Queen's Corgi, and that weird Robinson Crusoe film, N-Wave Pictures, stepped in to finish the job alongside Sony International and turned Chicken Hair into a movie star, making his screen debut in early 2022. By the way, I just want to quickly mention that I'm more of a newbie when it comes to Chicken Hair. I've never read the books beforehand, and the most that I have in terms of knowledge is from the info I found online and from the person who requested me this movie. So keep in mind that this will be from the perspective of someone who is first discovering this. So now that we're seeing Chicken Hair becoming the adventurer he always wanted to be, will this movie be as unique as the kind of animal that he is? Or is this as much of an abomination as a chicken and rabbit hybrid? Let's find out. The Story In this adventure, our hero Chicken Hare is off on the treasure hunt of a lifetime as he travels far and wide to find one of the most legendary relics called the Hamster of Darkness. However, there is much more to this quest than finding an ancient artifact. At the same time, Chicken Hare must come in terms with who he is. While he may try to hide his features that make him unique compared to everyone else, he'll have to learn to embrace his differences instead of shunning them if he wants to be the true adventurer he always dreamed of being. So we can either be ashamed of them, or we can embrace them, and recognize that our differences are what make special. us special. And already with the moral that it wants to convey, this is where the movie collapsed in itself. I might as well begin by discussing the feature's biggest problem. In a way, the movie itself is very much like its protagonist. While its unique assets are prominent, it does everything it can to try to be like any other animated kids film. Instead of highlighting any of its more creative elements or explore how its world and characters stand out from the rest as an adventure like no other, it pursues to be the same type of family film that's been repeated at nauseum, yet trips on its own feet to the point of making it a hard watch. Throughout this mission, there are two things that it tries the hardest that end up also being the weakest parts of the film. The first is trying to be funny, and I could say that this is anything but. Every single gag falls flat with how the execution tries too hard and dumbs this movie down to sometimes feeling juvenile. Then again, most of the comedy comes from Abe's cynicism, and his attitude gets old real quick. Where's the X? Don't maps need an X to mark the spot? Oh, darn tropes. The other big issue this movie has is the moral that it delivers. As it wants to be like a typical children's flick, it carries the familiar message about being yourself and embrace what makes you, you. A good lesson, of course, but the way that it dominates the entire picture makes it feel overwhelming. It hammers the moral so hard onto its audience that it becomes a detractor more so than an asset. I mean, I get it. Chicken Hair must accept who he is to become the adventurer he wants to be. You don't have to keep talking down to me about it for me to have that registered in my brain. It's just a phase. You'll grow out of it. 
But the worst part about these problems, and what caused this to be kind of a frustrating experience, is that when you do look at the elements that are exclusive to this picture, they actually have some potential. I'll get more into this soon, but I could see some materials in here that could have given this movie a chance to be not just good, but actually amazing. The picture contains many great ideas in terms of the world building, such as the locations that the characters explore, the lore that's part of the Hamster of Darkness, and the town that Chicken Hair lives, and how adventurers there are highly admired. When I saw how everyone looked up to adventurers like my dad, there and then, I decided that's how I want them to see me. In the right hands, this would have been very immersive to transport audiences to this world and have them feel like they're in the journey alongside Chicken Hair and the gang, learning about what it means to be an adventurer and be excited for the treasures ahead. Sadly, this is not the case. Again, it prioritizes in being a family picture and putting emphasis on what it fails at the most. And throughout all this, it leaves the storytelling to lack importance, and with how it fails to engage its viewers, it results in the picture to be insipidly foreseeable. I don't think this is the first time I've seen this movie with this problem, but the story is a hypocrite. It may tell us to appreciate our differences, but with how it wants to be a bland kids flick so badly, it should have practiced what it preaches. The Animation I know I'm slamming this movie hard so far, but now I'm gonna do a 180 on this and talk about Chicken Hair's best element. The biggest surprise I got from this picture is that the animation is incredible. This doesn't just look good, but this can be comparable to the works of major animation studios. It's too bad that, at best, it got a Netflix release and went theatrical in only a few European countries, because this would have looked great on the big screen. This is especially the case with how massive the scale of this picture is. I already said how the world building is one of the film's strongest components, but it's primarily thanks to the artists and animators who help present the possibilities of what the team can creatively do. You can see the richness of the world with its many different areas that the characters travel, along with all the different anthropomorphic animals that inhabit there. There is a lot that is going on, but everything is meticulously crafted to make sure that every place and every moment has a purpose to enrich the environment and to show how perilous the journey is. At the same time, while the size of it all is awesome, what makes it all work and come together is how it packs so much detail. The team really did think of everything to ensure that their large world does function properly, and if the story can't immerse its audience to the picture, then this is where the animation does all the heavy lifting. The designs are great and play with some of the animals' respective features, the backgrounds ensure that it is surrounded by life, rather it be the colorful kingdom, the plants in nature, or how the lore is present in the hamster's ruins, and the effects really add to the action. Not to mention a few scenes where the film experiments with a few different styles to spice up the visuals in a creative way. I know that this can be something that you can find in many other great animated films, but there can be ways that this movie provides some admirable moments that you won't find from the bigger name studios. The best example to prove my point is the scenes with the pig tribe. These aren't your typical jungle native pigs like in Muppet Treasure Island. These pigs are used for everything. On top of being a tribe, they are also the building blocks, the ammunition, the bamboo, and even the throne. They're like if you combine a pig with a Lego brick. Of course, with this admirable animation, it's easy to think how this adventure film could present the action scenes. I'll say now that, yes, the action can be exciting, but I feel like there's something holding them back. For the most part, whenever danger arises and the characters have to get out of it, those moments end up feeling short or there's not as much happening that there should be. 
The only exception is the movie's finale that does highlight some of the film's strongest aspects to show the kind of action-adventure that it could be. But for many others, they finish as soon as you start getting into it. However, I'd like to note that I don't blame the animation on this. I'm sure the animators did what they could in those scenes, but considering that this is an execution flaw, I blame the directing on that more so than the visuals. Admittedly, I wasn't expecting a lot from this film. I gotta give it that it has some amazing animation. The characters. I'll be honest, I've already established that I find the writing to be a disaster. And with the fact that it rather wants to focus on what it cannot do, like the comedy and delivering the message, and that the animators are the ones that are putting in the most effort here, you can imagine that this leaves the characters to be mostly hopeless. However, I won't say that it's the cast itself that's problematic, but rather the materials that they were given. There can be ways that you could present them as an inspiring team and a group you'd want to root for, and the film did hire some actors who are definitely capable of delivering the right emotions for audiences to connect with them. Really? Really? You are oh. not going to regret this. No siree. I gotta tell you guys, I think we're on the cusp of something great here. But the script is so bad that there's no amount of good acting that's capable of making any of them redeemable. Starting off with the title character, Chicken Hair is the personification of the movie's moral. As much as he wants to be like his adoptive father and become a renowned adventurer, he struggles with the fact that he is a half-chicken, half-hair hybrid. Throughout the beginning, it's the one thing that's been hindering his social life and laughed off as a freak, despite being the king's son. And as much as he may try to hide his hybrid nature, his disguise and his need to be normal is what's holding him back from his true potential. Considering the film's forceful need to shove the message down the viewer's throat, Chicken Hair does get tiresome to watch as he goes around like an angsty generic hero where we just wait for the moment that he realizes that his differences come with benefits. Also, am I the only one that finds it ridiculous when he tries to hide his chicken features in the kingdom? I mean, he is the son of the king and his name indicates that he is a hybrid. Everybody already knows that you're an animal combo. Who the fridge are you fooling when you're going on stage in front of a whole crowd pretending to be a full rabbit? <laughs> like it? It's very in. It's very now. Alongside him is Abe, the servant and good friend who, as the movie said it best, sees the glass all empty. He's supposed to be the comic relief to supply the humor along the journey, but with how bad the comedy is in this picture, he comes off as so annoying. All he does is whine and complain at every moment he faces, and his snark consequentially causes the feature to have a bit of a mean-spirited tone. He's like if Twitter comments turned into a tortoise. <sighs> Why can't I ever meet anyone who shares my pessimism? Also, there's Meg. In the graphic novels, she's a goblin-type creature who becomes allies with chicken hair. But for the film, she is presented as a skunk who has a history of being an outcast due to her skunk-like assets, but uses that to be the motivator for the hero as an encouragement to be himself, as it helped her to find the confidence she needs to gain her skills. Well, I've been on a fair number of adventures myself, exclusively solo expeditions, you know, because of the skunk thing. And the truth is, it's been kind of lonely. And then there's the feature's villain, Lapan who is unintentionally the funniest thing in this movie because of how much he's a ripoff of Scar from The Lion King. Seriously, almost everything about him is a copy of Scar. He's the main character's evil and cunning uncle who wants to take down his father to become the land's new ruler, he has a team of bumbling henchmen, his lopped ear is like his Scar, and even his voice is a straightforward impression of Jeremy Irons. Granted, the actor did a pretty solid job to sound like him, but come on, how can I take him seriously when he's an obvious copy-paste of a popular Disney villain? Every time I've requested a book on the topic of adventuring and it wasn't in, it was because you had checked it out. Somebody's been doing their homework. Again, despite the actors delivering some good performances, that doesn't change how these characters have flat and often unattractive personalities. 
The most that can be remembered from them is their problems that hinder the picture. While going on an adventure with a chicken hair hybrid sounds cool, the characters make it so that it's actually not. This movie was so close, so close to delivering an underrated gem. This could have been like Indiana Jones meets Zootopia. It had almost everything it needed to deliver a fantastic adventure, but its demand to be a kid's flick disintegrated any chances of being enjoyable. Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness is the ultimate mixed bag where the quality of its elements are the polar opposites to one another, where there are some things that are amazing, and there are others that are terrible. There are many components to the film that could have made it great, like the fantastic animation, solid voice acting, intricate world building, and an engaging finale, but that horrible writing that contains a bland story, annoying humor, flat characters, and an obnoxiously executed message reduces this to be nothing more but just another generic children's film. It was a frustrating experience not because this was so bad, but because of watching all that potential go to waste. However, despite everything I said, maybe it's not too late for this to find its audience. I don't normally recommend to watch something that I don't enjoy, but I think you should see this for yourself. Maybe there's a chance that you can look past the problems and become a fan for the things that it did right. I don't think this is a movie for everyone, but I don't think it's impossible for this to develop a fan base. By the way, if you enjoyed your time with this review, then why not give this a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can join me on the adventure of finding more animated films that may use their potential well. If they ever make a sequel to this, I'd be open to the idea, but maybe for next time, don't try to be funny, don't give me a lesson, just focus on bringing me on an adventure, okay? Hey guys, this is Animad, and I want to start things off by giving out a huge thanks to Jerry Mergori for his amazing support on Patreon, which allowed him to get some amazing rewards, including this one, where he got to ask me to review chicken hair. I forgot to mention while filming this that there is something that Jerry would like you to know about him. Believe it or not, Jerry is an experienced animator. And I don't mean someone who animates as a hobby from time to time and puts it up on YouTube or something. I mean that he's starting a very solid career in the animation industry, already had experience on some very prominent projects. Some of the projects that he has worked on include Space Jam A New Legacy, Cartoon Saloon's My Father's Dragon, Taz Quest for Burger, and the YouTube channel DTunes. Just thought I'd let you know, and honestly, I find it really awesome that even animators in the industry are joining in the fun of my reviews. And honestly, I never thought that I would have such a love-hate relationship with this movie, that I never thought that it would be this much of a mixed bag, because as much as there are things that I really did not like in this film, there are also things that I do see that are really, really good. And I only wish that they really emphasize more on the things that are actually good, like put in more emphasis on the adventure or the elements that are actually unique to this feature. Because otherwise, this really is nothing more but a generic animated kids film that we have seen again and again and again at nauseam on top of things that just really do not work like the comedy. But then again, I've already said that in my review. And I know that maybe there are people out there who might be upset at me for saying that and that the things that I've said about Abe, well, that's kind of like what I am doing to this review. But then again, in my defense, I am a critic. That is what I do. That is my job. So at least I have an excuse for it because in a way, I do get paid for this. <laughs> all right, but anyways, all joking aside, uh, I will give it credit though that 
what whatever it did right, it did so amazingly. And I would not be surprised if this does end up getting uh, a fan base because of the things that really do work. But anyways, now that that is over, it is now time that we shall go and move on to the animation hat to pick our next review. And uh, before we do so, I would like to go and mention that if you would like to be like Jerry and you want to go and support my work and get some amazing rewards at the same time, including but not limited to seeing my videos before anyone else, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But at the same time, if you would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and that I would put onto the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. All right, so let's see what else do we have here. What is going to be our next review? If I could go and pick one. All right, okay, there we go. We got one. All right, so the next review shall be... Oh, oh no, oh no, no, no! I was on, a, I was on such a good streak too with like these reviews. Oh God, oh, this one. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, I know this one is not gonna be good. I've already seen this movie before, in fact, I've already done an Animat Watches on this, but um, yeah, it's going to be time that I shall be revisiting this movie, and God, I really do wish that I would be reviewing the original, because this sequel, though, yeesh, oh boy, yeah, I think I'm going to need rescuing from this movie.